Hey, this is Scott, and today I just wanted to take a minute to go through my workflow in Capture One Pro. So I'm going to be importing and processing some pictures for a time lapse that I made for another video. I'll put a link to that video up on screen now, and also in the description below if you want to see that. So I've already gone ahead and created a session for this. I usually create a new session for every photo shoot. In Capture One, that's just the easiest way for me to keep everything organized. Uh, it gives you a folder with all of your raw files and your exported files and everything for each photo shoot. So you can freely move those around and uh, it, everything stays linked. You don't have any broken links in there. And it's just really easy to use. Anytime you want to open a session, no matter where it's located, you can just double click on the session file in that folder and it will open up with no problems. To get that set up, um, I usually just create something with a date and a name that gives me some idea of what the photo shoot is about. And I don't mess with any of the folder names. So uh, you can do that however you want, but it's pretty simple. So now my next step here is just to go and of course import my images. So I'll always import them straight from the SD or CF card, and I'll just put them inside the capture folder, which is inside that session folder. So just looking at the settings real quick, my import source of course is from the uh, memory card. Now import to is of course the capture folder, as I said, and you can create a subfolder, but I'm not going to at this moment. Uh, backup is something that you can use and it's um, pretty useful, but I'm not going to use it at this moment. File naming, I always forget to change this. Um, you can change it afterwards as well, after you already import them, but it's easier if you just change it here. So I'll give them some kind of name, for example, Mount Kuishi Timelapse underscore. And then after that, you can add um, some kind of counter or a lot of different uh, things. You can organize it based on uh, exposure compensation, color tag, aperture, like just a number of different things. So there's a lot of customization for your custom naming format when you're importing the images. But for now, I always use a three digit counter. And just to make sure I'm going to reset the import counter just to make sure that it starts at 001. Also for this particular shoot, I don't have anything more than a few hundred pictures. So a three digit counter will be just fine. For the metadata, I just have it set up as Scott Dumas Photography. And the adjustments, I have it set to include existing adjustments. So that will import any star ratings or anything like that that I put in camera. Um, I don't have any in this particular shoot, but if I did, it will import those and keep that setting, which makes it easier to go through and sort through your pictures after if you did that in camera. Finally, you have some things down the bottom here. Uh, you can choose to open the collection when the import starts. Of course, that's fine. You can eject the card and you can also erase the images after copying. I don't have any of those chosen at the moment. Um, you can do whatever you feel fit, but I'm just going to go ahead and click Import All. It'll start importing the images and building previews, so I will fast forward through this. Okay, so now that we have all of our images imported, we're going to go ahead and process them. Uh, before we do that, I just want to show you quickly that I'm using this uh, linear response curve, and that basically just doesn't apply any kind of curve or anything uh, when you import the image, and it gives you in my experience, the best dynamic range um, and adjustability where you have the most control over it. I usually get the best results when I start here, but it does come in a bit dark. So often I'll have to brighten up the image a bit. Uh, in this case, I did overexpose um, in the camera's meter just a bit, so we won't have to go that far. I'm gonna bring this up to 10 in brightness. Usually I'll jump this up to 40 to begin with uh, if I expose according to the camera's meter. The brightness will basically affect uh, mostly the mid-tones without really pushing the highlights or the blacks too far. So I usually like to use that instead of exposure whenever possible. After that, the contrast and saturation are also pretty flat when it comes in. So I'm going to add a bit of contrast and I usually start around 15 for saturation. Um, and then I go from there depending on the image. I'll turn on these uh, highlight warnings just to see where my highlights are at and I often will uh, recover a little bit of the highlights or uh, even pull the highlights in a bit depending on the image and how it looks. Uh, I'm okay with a little bit of the clouds clipping there so I'm going to pull it in just a little bit and I will uh, raise the shadows a bit to get some more of those mountains in there but only a little bit and then I will pull the black uh, back down just to get that bottom black uh, nice and black. Turn off these highlight clippings and I might go up to four on the black there. Uh, next, I will add usually just a little bit of clarity and structure. Um, depending on the image, I may do more or less. Um, I'm just going to leave it here for now. And I will go to the corrections tab. I'll 
pull up the defringing, I don't think it will be an issue in this image, but I find that it doesn't hurt. And the light fall off, I'll play with, depending on the image, I may keep it or uh, fix it to some degree. Uh, I will pull it up to about 65% for this image. I just like the way that looks, especially for a time lapse. I may add a little bit back later, but for now, I like where this is. I'm going to go back and add a little bit more saturation. And I'm going to adjust the color temperature just a bit. I want to make it a little bit warmer. Just going by eye here. Somewhere around uh, there works for me. Now Capture One has some cool color um, control issues. So I'm going to go down to the color editor and click on advanced and my selected tool. I'm going to select the blue of the sky and choose to view selected color range just to see, make sure I got most of it. And I did. And what I'm going to do is to go up here and create a masked layer from the selection. And then go over to your layers tab and now you have that layer one. And if you look, uh, click M, it'll show you the mask. And it's got basically this guy it has a little bit of the mountains there. I could adjust that if I want to by using the brush tool or the eraser tool. For now, I'm just going to leave it. And I will try to uh, boost the con uh, saturation just a bit in the sky. And that looks a lot nicer, I think. Uh, just to see without and with that on. I like that. I'm also just going to pull the color temperature down a bit. Uh, I think that when we warmed it up, it kind of took some of the blue out of the sky. So I'm going to pull it back down just a little bit. And I think I'm cool with where that's at. Once again, just check, turn that layer off and back on. And that sky looks much nicer to me. Finally, I'm going to go into the tab where we can work with the sharpening. I actually find that this uh, soft image sharpening one or two is usually pretty good for me. It doesn't overdo it and it gives good enough results. Um, depending on the image, I may choose one or the other for now. I'll go with number one, just zoom into 100% and check, and that's plenty sharp. I don't think it's over sharp. I'm satisfied with that. So now I just want to check the before and after to see, make sure that I'm, I'm happy with the adjustments that I made. The easiest way I found to do that is just to click the reset tool and then undo. And the reset and undo. And you can quickly see the original and the adjusted image. I'm happy with where this is, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to all of my images uh, click this little arrow up in the top to copy your settings. If you want to select or deselect certain things which will be copied and pasted to the other images, you can look in this tab here and it lists everything that you're copying. You can uncheck whatever you need fit. If you want to copy everything except for contrast, for example, you can uncheck that. But otherwise, I'm going to hit Command A to select all and click this down arrow to paste all of my settings onto all of the images and it will take just a moment to do that. So again, I'm gonna fast forward real quick through here. Okay, so now all of those adjustments have been copied to all of the images. So we are going to export and that's this little gear tab here. There are some different uh, presets that it comes with and you can make your own. Uh, I am going to export these to full resolution. Uh, my settings are just a JPEG at 100% quality. Adobe RGB, uh, all this stuff is fine. It's at 100%, there's no scaling. So my output location is the uh, output folder, which is in that session folder again. And you can make a subfolder. I'll go ahead and make one for uh, JPEG files here, uh, just in case I want to make a separate one for TIFF files or uh, full resolution and uh, web resolution. You can make a bunch of different subfolders here inside of that output folder. And finally, the format for the output naming. Uh, again, you can adjust this just like any other uh, naming adjustment in Capture One. Um, I usually just keep it as the image name. I rename them when I import them, and then I just keep that name all the way through to the export. But you can do whatever you want here. And after that, we'll go to the process summary. It'll give you a bunch of information here, and you can just click process when you're ready to do that, and that's what I'm going to do now. So of course, my editing process will go differently for different kinds of photo shoots, whether it's a portrait shoot, a tethered shoot, uh, in this case, time lapse. But more or less, that's basically what I go through with uh, each photo shoot. I know it's nothing special, um, but for me, uh, there's some certain points that I really would recommend. For example, using that uh, linear response curve definitely gives you a good starting point where you can get the most information from your file. In my experience, 
Um, using the brightness instead of the exposure has always given me good results without having to mess with your highlights too much and recovery too much. The color selector tool is actually really, really useful for situations like this where you have um, something that's clearly one color and it's different from the rest of the image. So you can select that very easily and make adjustments to it. Otherwise, you can do things manually with the brush or something like that. Um, but just that's a very, very useful tool. And finally, something simple but very useful is just to use the reset and undo button to check your before and after. If I was to output this to go to Photoshop, for example, like a portrait that I want to retouch, uh, I personally use 16-bit TIFFs. You could also output a PSD, but that's totally up to you. And lastly, I know that you can make libraries and sessions both in Capture One Pro, but I really recommend using sessions. It's just a really, really organized way to uh, work with different photo shoots, and you can move them around freely and not have to worry about relinking uh, broken links in different files when you move from a hard drive to your computer to another hard drive or something like that. Just very, very effortless. And for me, it feels uh, more organized even than Lightroom, even though many people praise Lightroom for being a great system uh, to organize your files. I don't disagree with that, but just for me, uh, after getting used to it, this system has worked a lot better for my personal workflow. So if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to see anything in particular about Capture One talked about in more detail, definitely leave that down below. I'd love to hear from you. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and as always, thank you for watching.